So from what you are seeing at the background, not too much talk. Let's go straight to the point. Anyway, I don't know whose birthday it is today. That person might be a lucky one. I'm test running a birthday song on my keyboard. Anyway, let's go. Okay, from what you can clearly see, I promise you I will explain the basics behind the design of the keyboard. So that is it. This is your complete circuit diagram. If you know what, actually the human ear has the ability to listen to frequency from the range of 20 hertz to 20,000 megahertz. Tw sorry, 20,000 kilohertz. So which means any sound that is being produced within this frequency that is switching on and off of a speaker within this frequency, you can listen to it. But anything above that, your possibility of listening to it is not possible. That is why the white people use a very high frequency, just like megahertz, to transmit FM radio with. That is why you cannot hear the information that is flying in the space, even when it is being transmitted. The same thing with satellite as well as other electronics. Some of them go as high as gigahertz. So there is no way you listen to it with your ordinary eye. Let's leave witchcraft matter to the witches, to the wizards. But it's not witchcraft, it's just simple logic. This is the this from this circuit arrangement, it is refers to as a stable mode. What we mean by a stable mode is switching something on and off within the certain microseconds as fast as possible. That is exactly what this thing is doing. While you press the keys, that is what it's doing. So this is the 555 timer IC. Look at it carefully. If you look at it carefully, let me raise it up. If you look at it, there is a dot on it. A simple dot. These are the pins on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they have eight pins. Four here, four here. So from the arrangement, that is how I draw it. I'm not going to be using this one to explain because it's going to be difficult for you to understand what is there. So this is a speaker. This capacitor is connected to give us the output. This is a trimmer resistor, which is variable resistor, which is what we have here. We use this to adjust the tune. Let me adjust it so that you see what I'm saying. Here is my screwdriver. Okay, no problem. Let's continue first. If I do, when I get the screwdriver, I will test it so that you see. You see that the, all these tones will change as soon as I adjust the streamer resistor. So from the eight stable mode, the eight, the first this is this pin number eight is connected to four, and two is connected to six. Then a UF a small UF capacitor is connected here. This capacitor will determine your frequency as well. So you can use one o three which is it is written 103 on it just like this i don't know whether you'll be able to see this number very well if you look at it carefully you see it is written 104 so i'm using a 104 uf capacitor that means the 0 0.01 sorry 0 0.1 uf you have 103 we have 104 you can use one one uf capacitor as well then the trimmer resistor 10k 20k depends on how you want your range of tune to be this 1k resistor is connected to avoid burning the complete 555 timer you can use 2k too it will still be fine then these resistors are connected in series to give you a variety of tools that is a variety of switching on and off which can either be very fast or very slow if you reduce it to be very slow you are going to be hearing it to be then if you take it very high you are going to be hearing Fee! so it all depends that's why you see different resistors here these things are called momentary switch they are all switches so they are called momentary switch that is why we have them here you can see them individually connected at different point that is how we design it so the capacitor ensures that you don't get direct dc into the speaker then the trimmer resistor to give you a variety of tones as well as the resistors so when you join them, based on how you adjust it, let me adjust it now for you to see. Observe, I'm going to press one key, one of the keys, while I'm adjusting it. You see how it will be two, the two will be changing. And it's going to affect all the tools too. So if for those who operate the keyboard very well, you observe that you have different different tools on the keyboard. So every touch you are touching, you might be adjusting something like this, but it's designed in a way that is sensitive to your touch. So that is a complete circuit of what is going on in the keyboard. So the keyboard is actually designed using this basic fundamental principle. It's just that as technology goes by, they continue to add more features to it to make it more fun and more lively 
and even with the introduction of beats as well as other things. So thank you very much. And just as time goes on, this is another circuit diagram of the same 555 timer. Using it for the keyboard, I see it. Our battery is here. This is our speaker through the 10 UF capacitor. This is the variable resistor you connect 11 key or 10 10 key depends on the kind of tool you want. This is 104. You clearly see it here. This is a 555. These are the different pins level. So if you don't understand this circuit diagram, then this is another one here for you for your own understanding. So this is how you connect it. So even if you want to design an inverter, you will be designing something like this, like this point. If you want to design even the bulk converter and the switch mode power supply, I've been showing you my bulk converter my boost converter you can once you're able to understand this arrangement around the 555 timer you are good to go there is nothing you will not be able to design even transmitters you can use this you can use jammers design jammers very complicated circuits that people will think you are a witch but don't worry i'm not teaching witchcraft let's stay there thank you very much for the watch